I'm really late, but I'm really excited. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. My name is Beth, if you are new here and I like to talk about music. Tonight I'm actually going to be checking out Five Seconds of Summer's latest album, Five Sauce Five. And I'm really excited for this album because let me just take you back in time for a minute here. I have been a fan of Five Seconds of Summer since I was probably 15. I got really into One Direction when I was 15. If you're new here, you might not know that I was literally obsessed with them. For a period of time, they were quite literally all that I cared about in life. And through that, I got into Five Seconds of Summer as well. I actually saw Five Seconds of Summer open for One Direction on the tour and then I went and saw Five Seconds of Summer on their own tour as well at the time, and it was just a time. It was a time. It was my boy band era. That's not to say I'm not still in my boy band era, but I don't let it consume my life as much, <laughs> as much as it did. I actually was recently home at my parents' house, and I found this poster that I took to the One Direction and Five Seconds of Summer concert. So can we just take a moment to appreciate this? I'm so proud of this. <laughs> Here's the thing though, I was nowhere near close enough for them to see me holding up this poster, but I think Liam might have seen my One Direction poster. The One Direction poster I made said, marry me Liam, and I stand by this. Liam winked at me at that concert. He did. It was my boy band era, my boy band summer. So I brought this as a little backdrop to reminisce. They look so young. They look like little babies, okay? But this is gonna be here as like a, a little backdrop for us, okay? To get us in the mood. Callum has always been my favorite. So really quick before we jump into the album, I did wanna explain a couple of things. The first is that I do know three singles from this album. Me, Myself and I is definitely my favorite, but I also really like Complete Mess and I do like Take My Hand as well. I really feel like in these singles, they've matured their sound and I don't know, I'm just getting the feeling that this is gonna be their most mature body of work in terms of everything, the sound, the lyrics. I have also heard Easy For You To Say and Bad Omens, but only one time each and I genuinely don't remember a lot. So I tried to film my reaction at midnight on the night that the album was released and I got only a few songs in before I realized that I just was not in the mood for that type of music. I objectively was enjoying it. I just wasn't in the right mindset for it. So I decided to hold off so I could really appreciate the whole album. I hope that makes sense. I basically just was in the mood to listen to a different type of music that night and I think I ended up filming something else instead. And now I'm going back and I'm gonna listen to the whole album. I hope you can understand where I'm coming from. I will say that I'm not a fan of the album title at all. I just think Five Sauce Five, all that it tells me about the album is that it is their fifth album. It doesn't tell me anything else about it, what the theme is. I do, however, love the track list. The track titles are so memorable and unique to me. Almost every song has a standout title. And I really love that because I feel like there's so many forgettable song titles in the world. But without further ado, let's listen to Complete Mess. I love this song. something about the production of this song and also the vocals, the lyrics, everything that feels super mature for them and feels like a step up from even their previous work. And I'm a fan of all of their work. The chorus is my favorite part of this song. I'm obsessed with it. I just think when it hits, it really hits. I remember the first time I heard this song and I didn't react to it and I wish I had, but you make me complete, you make me complete, you make me a complete mess. Like, is that not just the coolest lyric? You don't see it coming. It has that element of surprise and I just can't get over it. And then it goes back to this. 
Am I gonna be sad tonight? I've ever heard. This song is so good. The production right here is really all I need from this album, to be honest with you. This is such a strong opening track. They didn't have to go that hard for the opening, but they did. This production is everything. Michael! I've never been a saint. Have oh, sorry, he said. I mean, literally. Oh my gosh, and it ended like that. Wait. Okay, what a way to start an album. I mean, genuinely, that is the way that you start an album. A chorus that hits, the production just feels next level. I just think that they've matured everything about their sound and their lyrics in that song. It really shows their growth as artists. And it's kind of trippy to witness because I became a fan of them when they had songs like Voodoo Doll and English Love Affair. And I still love their older music. Don't get me wrong, but it's cool to witness their trajectory and their musicianship. Is that a word? Yeah, it's special. This feels special. It does. It feels like I'm witnessing their maturing. Uh, the next one, easy for you to say. Yeah, I did hear this on the night that it was released. I see it in moments, it's coming in ways. A sunrise in Sydney that's burning for days. Uh, a youth that was stolen and filled with mistakes. And look for someone to blame. But I'm over dramatic and drenched in my pain. Me. Last night, I lied. I looked you in the eyes. I swear to you, uh, each and every time I'll try and change my ways. Easy for you. Is this going to be their most personal album? Because I already feel like it is their most personal album. We're only two songs in, so I'm really jumping the gun. But from the singles and everything too, it just, it does feel like a step up. Like they're diving deeper and more in depth with their emotions and being more self-aware as well, which is another sign of maturity. I feel like I'm gonna say maturity way too much in this video to the point where you're gonna get annoyed. Okay, the falsetto notes are taking me out a little bit. The falsetto mixed with that pulsing beat, like that's all I really need. I love a beat, okay, and I love falsetto, especially the way that Luke Hemmings does it. You know, he just does it. The song also is building in this really cool way. Both of them, it feels like they've built in a really mature way. I feel like I'm literally gonna say the word mature, but. I feel it in moments of semblance of free. The lyrics. Someone was striking resemblance to me. Oh, I that holds me and loves when I bleed. A glimmer of hope that was staring at me. Last night, I lied. I looked you in the eye. The pre chorus. They brought a guitar in. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, the ending. They ended that in the most abrupt way I've ever heard and I live for that. Oh my gosh, there's just something that feels so mature about this sound and I'm gonna call it now. I feel like this might end up being their most cohesive body of work. I don't know, already I'm getting the feeling that it's just gonna be so cohesive. Throughout the singles and that song, in a way they all feel the same. Not that they sound the same, but they just really feel like one. The lyrics of that one were sad a little bit. I do feel like I'm gonna feel sad tonight. And I don't wanna feel sad because it's five seconds of summer and they're back and I'm excited. But the lyrics are getting me down a little bit and that's fine, you know? I'm here for the emotional roller coaster that this album will probably be. But the next one is Bad Omens. I remember I really loved this when I listened. Again, I only listened to like the first four songs, but I really, really loved this one, so I'm excited. So this is where I am <laughs> Hanging on a feeling Yeah, always I've been through the valley just to chase the pain again Do you hear the verses? But this is where we are And his vocals Every time he says I feel like this might end up being one of my favorites. I love the verses with his vocals and the lyrics. The lyrics are already really standing out to me on this album. And then the chorus goes so hard as well. I don't know, every aspect of it is really standing out in its own way. The verses, the chorus, literally the entire song. Is this song about ignoring red flags? <laughs> because BRB, I'm relating. I mean, who doesn't relate to ignoring red flags at some point? I love the chorus of this song. I love this entire song, but the chorus, the melodies that are happening, the production, like the production of this album already, it just feels miles ahead of their other work. And I'm not saying that their other work is bad. I love their old music too, but there's just something about this. I don't know, it feels so solid. It feels really, really solid. Honestly, if people don't take them seriously now, I don't know when people are gonna start taking them seriously because for so long I feel like people have underestimated them or people have labeled them maybe as a boy band. Not that there's anything wrong with being a boy band. They're a serious band, they're artists, they're musicians and they should be taken seriously. And so, I don't know, I feel like Artists sometimes get stuck in that boy band label. And again, not that there's anything wrong with being in a boy band, but I think it can feel really limiting. I don't know, I feel for them because I just feel like no one gives them the time of day. And I definitely feel like they deserve their moment. So five seconds of summer, here is your moment because you deserve this. Yes. Okay, they ended it abruptly again because they're attacking me today. That was my favorite so far, I think. It's hard to say because they've all been pretty strong. Just so many strong melodies and matured production from them. It felt so solid, felt so layered. It felt like one of those songs that I can't really register every single thing that's going on 
during the first listen. And I'm definitely gonna need more time with it to unpack all the layers of what was happening. Both sound-wise and lyrically, it's harder to grasp it on first listen because it is that more matured, layered sound and lyrics and everything just feels a little bit deeper, honestly. It feels like they're going deeper on this album so with my listening, I have to go deeper. From what I gathered, maybe about getting a bad feeling in a relationship and ignoring it because you love the person. I'm not sure, but I feel like no matter which way you slice it, it's a pretty relatable song. It does feel like they're getting into their emotions and really going deeper into their emotions on this album already. I know we're only three songs in. The next one is Me, Myself, and I, and this is my favorite of the singles. I'm obsessed with this song. I just think on every level, it is probably one of my favorite songs that they've ever written. I guess I got what I wanted. What this I transition needed. right here. Leave it up to me to fuck it up without a good reason. It was my own fault. I never picked up that phone call. Oh, Lord. Bullshit up in myself. Me and my selfish appetite. I did not need your help. Now it's just me, myself, and I. This is the best part. The transition into the second verse. They had no right. That is my favorite thing I've heard on this album. I always think back to it when I think of this song as being just one of the coolest things I've ever heard. I just really love the sound of this song. All together, it's a bop. No. I love how it goes back to this stripped down version and then it Oh, I'm finding it hard to say a lot about these songs, but it just feels next level. I love that song. It's such a bop. The production, the transition to the second verse, just the whole thing. The next one is Take My Hand. I have heard this song, but I've heard it a lot less than the other singles. However, I have not heard the Joshua Tree version. I'm not sure what that's about, so I guess I'll find out. Honestly, this is probably my least favorite of the singles. A painted heart on a sidewalk, a bleeding sun on a silver screen. I just have to say they're already really doing some imagery in this album that I am just eating up. I'm eating up every line because it feels like they're just doing so much imagery. So much imagery. Every line is imagery almost. And so that's definitely something that I'm really drawn to in songwriting. So I'm very glad that they're doing that, even more so on this album. I do feel like they're very good at imagery. Feel my ego when I, talk, I love that line. I could cry actually. This is so pretty. I take it back. I don't know if this is my least favorite single. This is beautiful. The songwriting, his voice, just everything. This is stunningly gorgeous. So I feel bad for saying it's my least favorite. But least favorite doesn't mean that I don't like it. It just means there's some songs that are above it. I, this is hitting me. So. I, I forgot about that line. Bobbing, crying, confused, crying. I forgot how stunningly beautiful the verses of this song are. 
I do feel like the verses are my favorite aspect of this song. I forgot how good this song is, to be honest with you. I feel like this is definitely one of my favorites so far. Uh, so I feel dumb for saying it was my least favorite. I owe you an apology. <sighs> It hurts me. Hits me. Give me the vocals, Luke. <laughs> everything, everything. The lyrics. I don't know what I was thinking saying that that was my least favorite of the singles. That one took me out. It had no right actually to take me out like it did. Everything about it, I think it is such a stunning song. The lyrics really, the lyrics were just beautiful. I don't know that I like related to them, but I don't need to relate in a song like that. I just feel like it's one of their most personal and most maturely written songs. The verses are so stunning and then it just goes off in the chorus and we're bopping. So it's a little bit of an emotional whiplash, but it's an emotional whiplash that I'm here for. So we are finally on a song that I've never heard, Carousel. And from here on out, I've never heard any of the songs. It's one of the ones that I was the most curious about. It's also in all caps. Some of the song titles are in all caps and some aren't. And yeah, if you've watched my other videos, I always wonder why that is. I just, I'm so curious and I'm already feeling a little bit sad because of the lyrics. <laughs> like they're really just diving into their emotions in a really deep way on this album. And while that's great, I also am now diving into my emotions. So that's fun. I built it from the ground up oh. just to watch me burn it down. I love that. Always looking back and I don't know why there's something there in the back of my mind. That lyric got me. There's a lot of lyrics on this that are getting me. There's a lot of lyrics on this that are really standing out. I feel like I can't even comment on one lyric before another lyric comes in that I'm obsessed with. This is really their most vulnerable album, is it not? They're really getting vulnerable. They're really just like, here are all my faults. <laughs> uh, he said, my life is a carousel. Does it feel like his life is out of control because I can relate to that on so many levels if that's the case. I don't know. I feel woo. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm a tiger. just a straight bop. Do you hear the production? Do you hear the beat? He's a tiger in the circus? I'm like, yeah, same. <laughs> At the beginning of the chorus, does it not sound like it's about to go in the chorus of Take My Hand? Interesting. Anyone else? 
Okay. I love that one. That was just a straight bop. I just feel like they're getting really vulnerable with their lyrics on this album. I feel like we're going deeper. I feel like I'm being taken on an emotional roller coaster, which I can't say I'm surprised by with their music. And this already feels so cohesive to me. It's crazy. <laughs> we're only... <laughs> We're only six songs in and I've been filming for an hour, so that's kind of to give you some idea. Um, the next one though, I'm really excited for this one because it's called Older. It's featuring Sierra Deaton, who is Luke Hemmings' fiance, I believe. They're engaged. I actually watched her on a show back in the day. I think it was X Factor. She performed with her boyfriend at the time, which obviously they're not together anymore. But I watched her and I loved them. They were like a duo. They were so good. She is so incredibly talented. She has a gorgeous voice. So I'm really excited for this collab, especially knowing that they're engaged. It's going to be such a cute song. I just know that. I don't want to get older. Out your head on my shoulder. On the day that you leave me, I'll forever be bleeding love. Oh. I don't want to get love song. I mean, obviously. Cocaine colored wedding dress. Oh, every time you twist my lips, my dear devoted delicate just you. This is super pretty. I just want to lay down. <laughs> There's some really specific imagery happening in this song. My dear devoted delicate. Well, that's alliteration. That's not imagery, but the alliteration, my dear devoted delicate. That's really poetic. The lyrics of this song feel really poetic to me. Like cocaine colored wedding dress. That is such a specific description. I have never heard a wedding dress described anything like that. I always love, like the more specific you can make the songwriting, the better. That's also just really pretty and the melodies are really pretty. I don't know how to comment on this. Genuinely, it feels perfect. They always do a little instrumental break. It's like, I don't want to get older. And here we are. We all have gotten older. Uh, chill, Haze. I'm not ready for you yet. I really thought that was beautiful. I love the specific detailed songwriting, imagery, poetic lyrics. And I also just thought it was really pretty in terms of the melodies and their vocals together and everything like that. Yeah, I'm really struggling to comment on this album. It's like pulling teeth because it's just, honestly, it feels pretty perfect. Uh, the next one, Haze in all capitals. <sighs> I don't know what to expect. I put on the suit. song, it kind of has a cool flow to it. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. 
Second verse even better than the first verse, check. I watched the weeks fly by, I'm not myself and you're not there. No matter how long, I still care. Nothing makes me happier than when the second verse of the song is even better than the first verse. And that's exactly what just happened right there for me. The second verse. Did you hear the second verse? I feel like I don't need to say anything because that was just insane. A banger. It's a hell of a ride. What is that? <laughs> I love that one too. I love that the second verse felt even stronger than the first verse. And I also just thought the chorus went so hard and for no good reason. There was really no reason for the chorus to go that hard. That might end up being one of my favorites. I feel like this is an album that it's gonna be really hard to pick favorites for because they honestly, I mean, if it's gonna continue being like this, they all feel super strong. And it's also hard to compare a song like Older to a song like Carousel, where one is a really slow, beautiful song and one's a bop. That's always the hardest ranking is when I have to compare a ballad to a really fast, upbeat song. It's really hard to do. And that's why I low-key hate putting my rankings at the end because they're always changing anyway, but that's a side note. Um, let's check in with the poster. Kiss Me, Kiss Me. Okay, who remembers that song? It's a great song. Can we just appreciate my little drawing of the voodoo doll? Thank you. Can we talk about this? Is it high or hay? I'm still waiting on the answer to that question. The next one, you don't go to parties. I was really interested in this one because I actually don't really go to a lot of parties. Um, it's 5 a.m. clinging to my couch and everyone I ever knew was standing in my house. Oh, I wonder who I'm looking for. Cause you don't go to parties anymore. Oh. Race horse dripping on the dirt that you got. The production? spinning up above all what's left of me. I'm still here. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't register what he said in the first verse because this production is everything and I'm getting very distracted by it. This is probably my favorite production I've heard on the album so far. on repeat when the video's over. Anymore. Oh my gosh, they did another of those endings. Okay, listen up. <laughs> that might have been one of my favorites. I don't know, I feel like I keep saying that, but that was such a jam. I already want to put that on repeat. You don't go to parties anymore. That was my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the album actually, probably. I don't know, it was just so freaking catchy. Yeah, it was another kind of storytelling uh, I really like the songwriting of it as well. You don't go to parties anymore, so I don't know why I'm here looking for you at this party. Ooh, that was just a banger. That was just a jam and a half. The next one I've been so curious about too, Blender in all capitals. 
blender it was also a single is it lonely where you are all the way across the room mm. this is different this is a little funky oh i guess only the stars with no truth oh this is this so much when that beat dropped that was everything that was my favorite moment of, this is my favorite that was my favorite moment on the album so far oh and the tempo change was that a tempo change oh my gosh this one's insane this one's absolute insanity the flow of this song this is another one i already want to put on repeat this might be my favorite of the singles. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. This is, oh, God. Ah. Oh, <laughs> supernatural. You die for her. Oh. Okay, that has potential to be one of my favorite songs of the year when that beat dropped and that I Don't even know I uh, Obsess I'm failing to think of the right words to sum up how I feel about that song But when the beat came in it was just everything <sighs> I'm being thrown in a blender myself. So the next one this is the one that I have been the most, like, number one most excited to hear, Caramel. And why have I been excited? Because I have been really into iced caramel lattes with oat milk lately. Um, so that's really the only reason that I was really excited to hear this. Well, also, I'm just curious, you know, how are they gonna work caramel into the song? Caramels? Caramel? Caramel? Which do you say? I say caramel, but a lot of people say caramel. To me, that's just too much. Like, caramel, caramel will do the job. <laughs> I hope this, I really want this to be my favorite one. Is that too much to ask? I need this, I'm claiming this song, so I want it to be good. Oh, love it. <laughs> He's doing the run. I can't handle the little runs that he's doing in these songs. It makes me want to run. My favorite. I've claimed it. <laughs> Bring up the past, ask, me the no the glass, we come I live for that, actually. I actually do really love this one. This is one of those songs that I just know with every listen, I'm gonna like it even more. And within a few listens, I'm gonna be literally obsessed screaming it at the top of my lungs. Um, so, but and the chorus, the chorus. When he said caramel, that was everything. Okay. Love like a landslide. Oh. I kiss you. Best bridge. The best bridge. Oh. Oh, my.
my god. Okay, the production. Oh. Okay, absolutely obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. I feel like that is gonna be my favorite. And it has nothing to do with the title. I know I claimed it before I heard it, but that's just because I had this feeling about it. I just love the chorus so much. The production toward the end took me out as well. This album is gonna be hard to rank. It's already, it's hard to know what my favorites are because it feels so solid. It really does. Like every song is standing out uh, in their own ways. So I feel like this pillow is awkward. The next one is Best Friends. And I believe they have a bonus track on Youngblood that's like Best Friends. Best Friend. Honey, I can see you when you're reaching out for more. If he was only rational until it all becomes a feeling of the past living on the summer sun. He keeps mentioning sun. I feel like that's a big motif throughout the album that he's mentioning like being under the sun, being someone's sun, golden light. I don't know, there's some he keeps mentioning stuff with that. Call me on my shit, and my jaw is on the floor. I'd love to have somebody never feel to what to say. Silver lining again. I get so excited when someone other than Luke sings, not because I don't love Luke's voice, I do, but because I feel like none of the other four sing as much anymore. I enjoy hearing their different voices. That's one of the things that drew me to them as a band is hearing the different styles and different voices of each member. So I got this pillow, okay. I remember waiting on the car before the storm Back when we were on the other side of 20 Michael They need to stop doing the runs I liked that one. I don't know that I have a ton to say about it. I thought it was another jam. Another one that was really catchy. I feel like I could sing along to it immediately. I don't know, I get the feeling that this album could get stronger with each listen for me. Like every time I listen to it, it's going to hit even harder. And the more that I listen to it, the more I'm gonna love it. The next one is Bleach. And I actually am thinking of the song Bleach by Isaac Dunbar. Bleach by him is so good and it's, so I'm thinking of that song. I don't mean for Luke to be lost in the pillow, by the way. Oh. Okay, we're slowing it down, I guess. I wanna occupy your brain, be the only living space in your head. This is beautiful. Mine's the only name that's under your breath. But I'm to a gunfight when the hurting is all mine, when the feeling is a time. Can I make up for lost time? He said bleach in my hair every Saturday. So he's kind of changing up the color. I'm not trying to block Luke, okay? It's just, there's no other place to really put it. Um, <laughs> is he insinuating that he keeps dyeing his hair over and over again? I've never dyed my hair, but I feel like that's often a signifier that someone feels out of control in their life or is struggling in some way. So they dye their hair kind of to feel some sense of control. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just feel like some people do turn to it as a coping mechanism. So it could be that that's the state of his emotions is he feels like he needs to keep changing his hair color in order to have some sense of control of his life or just escape, you know, have a change, feel like a different person for a minute. I don't know, I'm getting a little deep up in here, <laughs> but this is so pretty. Oh, it's spinning down the drain. The 
imagery. I mean, really, the imagery on this album. I feel you underneath my tongue, next to every word that I should have said. <laughs> okay. But enough to a gun fight with the hurt in his own mind when the feeling is at her. <laughs> I know, but I can't take it no more. If this bitch in the hallways, I can start over. Bitch in my head just to get away. I'm washing it out. Till I figure it out. I love that. He said something about how everything he wants is spinning down the drain. So it definitely sounds like yet another sad song on this album. Sounds like it's about his emotions, maybe heartbreak, feeling out of control, feeling like you want to escape. This is a very emotionally vulnerable and deep album from them. There is so much to unpack here that I definitely am not scratching the surface on. And it's going to take a few listens to really unpack everything, but I always love vulnerable lyrics. I always love really emotional lyrics. As an emotional person myself, you know, I really love the lyrics on this album. In addition to feeling like it's their most mature album sonically, I do feel like it's their most mature and self-aware album lyrically. But the next one, Redline, all of these titles are really standing out, really memorable, and I'm really curious about each and every song. Okay. It's hard to fake when I'm not faded. Ooh. I thought I could prepare myself. Ooh. The actor says he hates himself. Reaching out for someone's help. How many times did we run from each other? How many times did I walk out this door? Cause I've been spending all this time alone. I'm on the road. I really like that part. I'm struggling with this one. I feel like this is definitely my least favorite so far. It's just not really standing out to me, but I do love the part when he goes up into those almost yelling vocals. I'm on the red line, I'm sipping Aperol, something to that effect. I really love that part of the song, but as for the song as a whole, it's just not standing out to me. I could just need more time with it. I love this though. I thought it was gonna drop. Is that the sounds of the red line? Yeah, so honestly, I didn't really have a strong opinion on that one. It didn't really stand out to me. I feel like this album has been so strong so far. I did think the lyrics were good. It had some really cool moments in it. I loved when he went up into that, I'm on the red line, da da da. I really love that part of the song. I can tell by the look in your eyes that you don't want to fight on a Friday night. I can tell by the look in your oh my eyes God. that you just want to get on a one-way flight. The layered vocals there are one of my favorite things I've heard on this album. That's just stunning. I love stuff like that when they layer the, the harmonies. Yeah, I love harmonies. I don't want to block you, Luke, from being seen. But I will if I have to. You keep falling. You, I don't even know myself. Oh. Know myself. This is gorgeous. I can tell when you're slipping from me. I don't know how to comment on this. This is the best thing I've ever heard. This is one of my favorites so far. I'm obsessed with Michael singing the harmonies behind Luke. Obsessed with the melodies. Like, I don't know what else there is to say. This is really standing out. I'm glad that this kind of brought me back after the last song. I 
Does it not just feel like they've found their sound and they have matured in every way? That was one of my favorites. Absolutely obsessed with the melodies. Absolutely obsessed with the harmonies. I just thought it was beautiful. Another beautiful one. The melodies are so strong. The production is there. Like everything is in line. This is just feeling like such a solid album so far. There's only been one song that I haven't been into. Wow, and that's impressive. But we are on Flatline. And this is the one that I was scared for because why are we flatlining? That does not sound very good. You'd have seen me like a year ago, year ago. I was someone you don't even know, even know. Someone just like you, no one else. Oh, I'm falling for the first time. Heart is gonna flatline. Oh, I love that. Verses were so deep and low and then it went up into the falsetto chorus. I loved that and I really love the guitar or the ukulele in the background. Something a little bit different. I feel like we haven't gotten a lot of that on this album, but I really love that. Oh, the, the chorus goes so hard for all of these songs, I swear. And it goes back to that. Oh. Oh. That's a crazy note. Loved that one too. That chorus drop was just everything. You'll have to forgive me because I feel like I'm not having a ton to say about these songs. And it's just because this is the kind of album that I just want to put on, lay down, curl up into a ball and listen to. It just feels so solid. It just feels so, so good. And I, so I struggle. I struggle to think of things to say. Yeah. I don't know, it's a lot to process too. It's kind of a lot to process this album in one sitting. There's just a lot to unpack in every way. The sound, the layers of production, as well as the lyrics, all feel like they'll need some time to sink in. It's a lot, it's a lot, and my brain is kind of just gone. Um, the next one, emotions. Great, more emotions, I can't wait. Talk about it, I don't... The song starts immediately, I don't even have a chance to hear it. That's what I've been noticing. They don't do a fade in or a fade out on a lot of these songs. It starts immediately and it ends abruptly. So that's interesting. They're not wasting our time. Talk about it, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. Maybe that's why I'm always high. Oh. You always got one, two, three, four, five more things to say. Oh, Michael. Don't mind me, I'm just feeling kind of broken. Kind of broken. Okay. <laughs> if you need me, I'll be here with my emotions. My emotions. Same, honestly, you literally same. I'm just needing a little space. I'm just needing a little time. Don't mind me, I'm just feeling kind of broken. I'll be here with my emotions. Cry about it, I don't want to cry about it, but I still can't help it sometimes. The second verse. I'm already screaming. Okay, this one is coming for me because he's like, I'm just gonna sit here and feel my emotions. And that's exactly how I feel about this album. I feel like I just wanna sit with it and feel things. And I'm not having a ton to say. You know, I'm not having a ton of output. I'm kind of just taking it all in. And it, um, the harmonies are beautiful. Michael. I love that Michael's singing this one. It does, it feels right. It feels right to me. And I, okay. I always got six, seven, eight, nine, ten brand new mistakes. And he wants to 
someone have a lighter? <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just feeling kind of broken. 24-7. I'll be here with my emotions. My emotions. I love that melody too. I'm feeling some type of way. I don't know why. I'm needing a little space. I'm needing a little time. They knew that that one would get me. That's like me every day. <laughs> okay, that's me literally every day. Unironically. Um, you came for me today, Michael Clifford. I'm doing my best and I guess that's the best I can do. I'm doing my best and I guess that's the best I can do. It's a really simple lyric, but I love that they included it in this song to kind of be a message of hope. To not just stay in that place of brokenness and emotions, but to sort of rise from the ashes and just keep doing your best. And at the end of the day, that's really all we can do. I swear, this is driving me nuts. Can I just, you know what? No, I need to leave it up because it's, it's like in the spirit, but <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I love this and I am gonna put this on repeat when I'm sad. Oh, Michael, you got me with that one. I loved that. I know I keep saying it's my favorite, but that one was one of my favorites. That's a song that I feel like I could just put on when I'm feeling my emotions, when I'm feeling sad, can just put it on when I'm alone and it can be kind of my go-to song for that experience. Cause it sort of does feel specific in the experience that it's describing. When you just need to be alone with your emotions, alone with your thoughts. I don't know that I've heard a song that specifically talks about that before, at least not that pointedly. I loved the chorus too, the melodies. I also like the Michael saying that one. Oh, I felt like it suited him and he has a way when he sings of bringing a lot of character to the song he has a way of singing that's a little bit unique and special so i love that about him the next one bloodhound okay god what are these song titles okay i love the heat i love the noise a million nights under the thumb I know my life has just begun and I want to feel it all. Same. I, I just want you to know I'm fighting laying down and listening to this album. I just want to lay down on my bed and listen to this album. that transition oh my gosh the transitions on this album are really cool too like he's gonna lose it all. It's the production and the beat Real question, why are the drops on this album so good? When it drops and he says Bloodhound, that is another one of my favorite moments on this album. That's just everything. I know I keep saying everything is my favorite because there's so many standout moments on this album. There's so many standout songs on this album. Seriously, it all really stands out. Bloodhound. Oh, I'm really excited to listen to this on repeat, so. absolutely adored that one. That was another one of my favorites. The drop in the chorus was just everything to me. Bloodhound. 
that melody there and every time the chorus came on it was like instant serotonin. Uh, I can't wait to put this album on repeat and that's another one that I'm specifically interested in just putting on repeat until I get sick of it. Honest to God, all of these songs have been so good. They just have such addictive parts in all of them. Sonically, lyrically, really, really feels like their best work. But we're on the last track. This is another one I was really curious about because it's called TEARS in all caps and with an exclamation point. And I'm kind of excited for this one because I really hope it's a song that I can cry to. If you watched a couple of my other reactions, like I'm kind of in a mood for sad music. So if this is sad, I'm all for it, honestly. There's a hole in the sun. I just have to mention they keep talking about the sun, do they not? like this one and some of the other songs on this album too have been about wanting to get high in order to feel you know an escape from life this is another emotional one it's another sad one I'm shocked It's so easy to feel like I'll feel better if I just go do this thing. Whatever the thing is. It doesn't have to be drugs or anything like that. It could be that or it could be something else. The vocals. Do you hear the vocals on this song? They're so trippy. They're really interesting. Either they're going really low with their voices or there's some effect. But it's really cool. It's something a little bit different from some of the other songs. Oh wow. It took me way too long to listen to this album. I know. But I can now say that I listened to all of Five Sauce Five, every single song on their little album. Oh my gosh. I think this is probably some of their best work, without a doubt. For me, I don't know what to do with this. For me, this is some of their best. I loved every song on this album. I think the only one that I struggled a little bit with was Redline, but this was such a solid, solid album from them. I can easily say that I think it's some of their best work. I don't know if it'll end up being my favorite album from them or not, just because they have a lot of great albums. But I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it is their most mature songwriting in terms of everything, in terms of the sound, in terms of the vocals, the lyrics, everything was just so strong throughout the entire album. And this was a really long album. It was 19 songs. So to have no songs that felt like filler is saying a lot. Honestly, all I wanted to do was lay down and just take it in. It feels like they've really found their sound. It feels like they upped their songwriting and their storytelling using really specific detailed imagery and songwriting, which I always love. But I don't know, I really love this album and I'm very impressed with them. I feel like they deserve their moment. So go listen to this album. Ugh, it's kind of crazy to see how far they've come from their earlier music and even the difference between Young Blood and Calm and this album. It's just a lot. It's kind of a whirlwind to think about. Yeah, Calm was not my favorite album from them. For me, it was like the definition of a hit or miss album. Like I love some songs on that album and then others were just not it for me. Well, I hope this was interesting or at least fun to just hang out with me. I wanted this to feel a little bit more chill, a little bit more laid back. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. This is my album ranking. What are some of my favorites? Some of my least favorites always open to change and evolve over time and feel free to disagree with me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did make it to this point, I've been filming for over two hours. 
so I'm pretty out of it. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to support my channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.